Okay, uh, we are in we are in committee of the whole for the purpose of discussing such matters as have been referred to it, specifically uh, site selection business and everything relating thereto. Kevin Stanley, for a purpose, do you seek recognition? Yes. Honorable Chair Kevin Stanley, I believe that we have both a tactical decision before us. The tactical decision is what to do about Westercon 77. That's the immediate question. But there's also a strategic question before us, is what should we be doing with Westercon? I believe everyone here is aware of the proposals that have been distributed in advance of the meeting are also on paper here, which give us as, a member, as members to decide between, broadly speaking, two scenarios. Scenario one is to say, Westercon has outlived its usefulness. It is time for it to retire. This is a legitimate condition. There, I know are people here who want that. Um, and therefore, that's scenario one. And it is actually quite simple, which is a motion to repeal the bylaws. Should we repeal the bylaws, which is an amendment and would require a majority vote here and a majority vote next, at next year's Westercon, the bio, and it includes a transition provision, which I'll explain. Uh, the meeting, the, the, well, so this, the members of the, meeting, the Westercon business meeting will have said, we're done. Play out the string. If there's two more Westercons to, to happen, let them hold their conventions. They don't have business meetings. They don't have site selection. And that's all. That's the choice. Scenario two is more complicated. This is the one where you say, well, Westercon is does seem, we think that Westercon has some hope and some future, but possibly the way we have it structured is hampering its ability to, to be its best self, if you like. Right now, the Westercon bylaws as written, which were last significantly revised at Westercon 45, I know, I wrote them. <laughs> assume, that the, the, assume that the Westercon is going to be held over the 4th of July weekend. <laughs> And all of the deadlines in our bylaws are written around that with hard-coded numbers. The proposals in scenario two basically are, I think it's five, five different uh, constitution or bylaw amendments that, one, remove the even recommendation that we hold the convention over Fourth of July weekend, which is never a requirement. It was always just a recommendation. And secondly, change all of the deadlines to relative references in terms of so many days before the convention happened. In my opinion, if we wish to continue holding Westercon, we need to adopt scenario two. Now, in fact, we, can rec we could conceivably recommend both scenarios because all of this stuff would have to be ratified next year. It, they are contradictory scenarios. You could, rat you, could not, you could pass them all this year and let next year's meeting decide. But I personally tend to think that it would be better if we uh, adopt one or the other. Um, I now place in consideration for the Committee of the Whole to recommend either Scenario 1 or Scenario 2. I have spoken in favor of Scenario 2. And I, uh, before I yield the floor entirely, I would like to hold the floor and yield for questions about the technical element of the, these proposals, if there are any questions. Does we, any member seek recognition to be yielded to? Well, that suggests to me that maybe having distributed it in advance of the meeting helped. Uh, I think, thank you, Mr. Uh, Honorable Chair. Yes, does any member wish to speak in favor of scenario one? Mr. Yao. Yes, I, oh, uh, since this is a new meeting, I'm still Ben Yao. Um, and no, I am not a resident of the Western Zone, never have been. On the other hand, I believe I have attended more Western cons than anyone else. Um, and I have worked on probably more Western cons than almost anyone else. I think that Western con has been a valuable convention for many, many decades. 
we have had a long string of failed Western cons. We are here yet again at a lost con rather than at, at, at a lost con Western con because we were unable to hold a regular Western con. Uh, and at a lost con Western con, we are again unable to select through normal voting procedures a Western con. At Tonopah last year, we were unable to vote for a Western con except by taking advantage of the extraordinary powers of the business meeting to ignore all the rules about how you pick a Western con. This does not seem to me to be an indication of a healthy convention. We have had successful Western cons in the past. We have certainly held a successful Westercon, NASFIC, combined lots of conventions in the fairly recent past. But our track record is not good. Our track record <coughs> has said that people don't seem to be interested in running for a Westercon, or we would have had people running for a Westercon. And quite frankly, Westercon has in many ways served its purpose. It has provided an anchor for the Western region for many, many decades, and that has been an incredibly valuable service. I am not denigrating the importance of Westercon. I think it has probably outlived its usefulness. There are now many established West Coast conventions that draw people from large sections of the West Coast. There didn't used to be. Westercon was established for the purpose of making sure there was a Western, a Western region convention when the World Con wasn't on the West Coast because there was nothing else. Well, there, the concept of nothing else doesn't exist anymore. We've run out of, I think we've run out of reasons to hold Westercon, and even more important, I think the people who have been trying to run Westercons have given up on Westercon, or we would have had candidates. We would have had successful Westercons, and right now we don't seem to. Therefore, I believe it's used up its really really great run, and I think it's been a wonderful run, and I think we've used it up. Chair from Mrs. Lisa Hayes. <clears throat> Lisa Hayes, I can't completely disagree with Mr. Yala's points. However, I want to state, and he would say it himself, 2019 was a wonderful con Westercon convention combined with others, and it was a very big and great deal. Then we hit the massive pandemic and everybody stumbled. Everybody fell down. Major regional conventions all over the place didn't happen. I think we should be in the position to say, maybe he's right, but you don't bury the patient because they're in the hospital. We wait a little longer and give it a chance to recover. There are people here who want to put the effort in and work hard. I'm one of them and will do so if given the chance. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, so next should be a speech in favor of scenario one. Jerry Sullivan. Um, I came to West Japan frequently from late 90s through early 2000s, and then I came to my financial sensibilities, and this is the first time I've been back. Um, what I've noticed and watched, and I've always you know, watched the business meeting videos and everything, um, what I've noticed in watching fandom in general is RiverCon is the number one example of a really great convention 
who got to the point and said, it's time to pull the plug. And they did. And they're thought of and remembered fondly and well. This weekend, Shambanacon is doing the same thing in Indiana? Yeah. Uh, yeah thanks. Um, Illinois, thank you. Um, and they're doing, then they basically got to where I think Westercon is and made the positive decision. I've seen other conventions and I'm blanking on names to say, but ah, Lunacon, I'll, I'll pull on Lunacon. I've seen, yeah, we love this convention, it used to be great. It's had real problems before the pandemic came along. And, and you know, other conventions that hold on and hold on and they have really good people who are kind of burning out and don't have an, and they, they wither. And that doesn't help the reputation of the convention. They're not remembered as how great they were. They're remembered for their failure. And so I think that making a conscious decision and thinking, yes, we're at that point, and better to decide firmly than have Westercon stumble and stumble and stumble and be remembered the other way. I'd rather it be remembered as great as it was and has been. And that I'll have a good time this weekend. Thank you. Two paper scenario two. Cliff? Uh, Mr. Chair, I Cliff, Cliff Dunn. I would like to note, as the previous speaker in paper two did, that basically all the stumbles that are being cited are 2020 and beyond, and that is largely centered around the pandemic. Uh, I already said Cliff Dunn. I think all speakers are going to need to specifically let the person in front of them know. Oh. Yeah, well, so you can say their names, you just don't care. Uh, you can say we will, uh, pre please proceed, and we can have to discuss on the point of person later. Um, yes. Uh, honestly, the biggest, you know, the, big, the biggest stumble has, I would argue, been the 4th of July implied requirement. It's the bylaws don't require it, require it, but they strongly encourage it, and as Kevin noted, they hard code everything to that. And a little problem called Baycon moving happened, which uh, basically cut out a large chunk of the people who would have normally attended, especially in the uh, central zone. Um, and, you know, frankly, we, Westercon can probably survive if it's not hard coded to the 4th of July, but it can't survive against another traditional convention of that prominence in this region um, under the current circumstances. As to the uh, lack of bids, I think one problem is simply that a bid, if, if I recall correctly, has to have a 501c3, and not everybody has one of those hiding in their pocket. If there were, for example, a, a standing 501c3 that was willing to step in for any bid that waltzed along, I suspect a couple of bids would have come up in the last couple of years, but the simple logistical hassle of getting a 501c3 through an IRS that has been backed up for years, you know, that dog ain't gonna hunt. So uh, there are, pra pra that, you know, one problem can be dealt with by having a working 501c3 uh, take up that part of the burden or setting that aside for the time being, and the other can be handled by just letting this move. This is not an unresolvable problem. If anything, we've just written ourselves, we've hard-coded ourselves into a corner, and we can fix that here, and that's what Proposal 2 does mostly. Mr. Bergstedt, did you have a question of purpose rating to people identifying themselves? No, but as long as they state their name before they begin to speak. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Marcia Glasner. Um, I'm here this weekend because it's for Westercon. Um, I have Speaking, speaking as a fan, I try to go to the Western Cons. I've been to many successful Western Cons that were combined with other, con combined with other cons. Um, and from, from my perspective, this has been a great way for me to meet people, other con committees, um, other people you know, who, who put on cons um, and attend cons in other parts of the Western U.S. And, you know, I've gotten to know a lot of people that way, and I've, uh, you know, started attending a couple of cons um, because I had attended one where they were combined with Westercon. 
And so I think that this is, you know, a great thing for us to have and that it will, you know, if, if other cons can say, yeah, we want to be the Western Con this year, I think that that will help both the con and the Spanish community. So um, I, I'm strongly in favor of option two. Uh, Hi, my name is Michael Mormon, and I've been going to WesterCon since 68, and I've been going to WorldCon since 63, and Ben is my sister. <laughs> uh, I guess we may need option two. In order to make option three work, and option three has got to be to change your expectation of WesterCon from 1,500, 2,500 down to 350 or 450, and let little towns have a Westercon for their local fandom and get the name and have people that want to come, come. Uh, if we had a committee that got eight votes instead of 10 votes and wants to hold the convention, I think option three should be to award it to them. Thank you. I, I don't see anybody else rising. And and the, the chair would remind people that there are you have unlimited speeches in the committee of the whole thing. So Jerry Sullivan. Um, I just wanted to mention I, I believe it was Cliff who had said, um, gee, this is all pandemic related. And while size of the convention speaks to your comment as well, size is not the measure of success. And the Western Con industry doesn't have how large Western Cons were every year. For all the years they have, up until 2004, with the exception of Honolulu, where I was at, with that exception, Western Con was always over 1,000 people. And 1,000, 1,400, 1,500. Years before that, it was larger. It has been 300 to the highest of 800 since 2004. That's long before the pandemic happened. In the back? You get a twofer. You kind of get a twofer. Sally Rose Robinson. Um, I'm in favor of uh, option two mainly because I feel like, by looking around this room, we are not reaching out to the people who don't know what a WesterCon is. And I think that we need to keep in mind that by being able to link it to another convention, it gets the word out and it gets the importance about what we all know it is. And it also links it to other conventions that can also boost and share what our love of the fandom is. Because again, younger and younger people are not seeing what we all in this room have seen. Um, and moving it off of having to be quote unquote on 4th of July weekend gives us the opportunity to move and get to other places. Um, and also, as a Baycon person, one of the reasons we had to move is because we were also in the same boat that Westercon has been in, or is in, where we were also shrinking. But we realized by switching our stuff around and getting out to younger audiences, it made us more fresh and more aware of what's going on in the world. So <coughs> that's what I have to say. Uh, are you yielding? I'm in favor of Yes, but are you, with your passing your mic front, are you yielding for? Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm yielding to Durell Kurlinski. And wait, what was it? What's your last name? Robinson. Robinson. Oh, she's <coughs> not fun of mine. My name is Durell Kurlinski. If you need me to spell it, I'm happy to do so. Okay. <laughs> it's a fun name. Um, I am the 2024 chair for Baycon. And as Sally Rose, who is my vice chair, stated, we had to move our date. We didn't have a choice. Up until two years ago, and I've been doing conventions since 2010, 
up until two years ago, I had no clue what a Westercon was. It's not obvious. It would be awesome to have scenario two be chosen because then other conventions can help educate people who are just discovering fandom or discovering conventions that aren't Comic-Con as to what WesterCon is and the importance that it holds for the convention life. I mean, it, Scenario 2 gives you the best of everything and not being locked into a, it has to be on the 4th of July weekend, means that other conventions can't be looked down upon for taking your weekend. Okay, thank you. I yield to whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna go first. Okay, uh, I saw two, uh, I saw a couple people stand up. Are either of you speak want to speak in favor of scenario one or? Were you the one? Uh, okay, well, okay. Uh, in that case, we'll go to in favor of scenario scenario two. I'm going to Western Conference. That's right. Uh, Nora, Nora, sorry. I'm, trying to alternate as best I can. I am Linda Robinette, and I'm speaking in favor of two. I was unaware of the choice before I went into this meeting because I didn't see the, the paperwork. But I think it's great because I can think of, for example, just in my area alone, San Jose, uh, no, but Bay Area in that I area. I can think of a consonance, which is a built convention in March, which would probably blend nicely with the Western Con. There is an the above mentioned unknown, who has heard of it? Baycon would be a nice combination. They'd be back on July 4th, but Baycon moved to July 4th for reasons. It had nothing to do with the destruction of Western Con, so don't have that idea. There are other conventions. There's Clockwork Alchemy in the oh, yeah. April time frame in the Bay Area. That would be a good combination. It's a steampunk, obviously. So I'm only mentioning these, but there's the okay. Con in New Mexico in August. That puts it a little close to World Con, but that's what Bubonic Con does and avoids the, West, the World Con dates. So I can think of a few Western conventions, and there's stuff in Phoenix and San Diego. There are a lot of people we could really uh, cooperate with and add the flavor of their conventions to us, because each convention has a different personality. Mile High Con is an excellent example. They kind of goofed up by having me <laughs> masqueraded at, in the afternoon, and all the Western Con people went, what? But it was neat. It was a kind of a... A Harry Potter con or something that I'd never encountered had a lot more young people. That was a good combination. So I think uh, being able to modify the dates so that we can combine with these different conventions would actually enrich us. Lisa. I move to have a straw poll to see which one we like. That I, that, second. That's, yeah. That, yeah. I can just do that as this year. Okay, uh, if you are inclined towards scenario one, please raise your hand. Um, Since, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm going to, res like, I'm going to restate one? because I think what? we have, yeah, I'm going to restate. Okay. Scenario one, retire Westercon, repeal the Westercon bylaws, wind, wind down Westercon as a convention. Scenario two, uh, continue Westercon, make a bunch of, mod make a bunch of tweaks that are written here. Uh, since this is a straw poll, you don't have to actually be in favor of the specific tweaks as, as ri like all of the specifics of the tweaks. This is just to kind of get a sense of whether the room wants to go to getting rid of Westercon or keeping it around with some modifications. Uh, there's also a scenario. There's also a scenario three here that's just kind of that's kind of a wait and see approach. Uh, I'm not. I haven't heard any speakers in favor. of I haven't really heard any speakers in favor of going. Uh, one, three. I made a scenario three of awarding yeah. it to the bid that only got eight votes instead of ten. There actually already was a scenario. Three. 
So, okay, so I'm not, oh, okay, okay. Uh, so for this straw poll, I'm not, this straw poll is gonna be just kind of for, on the direction of Westercom and not <laughs> what we should do with, specifically what we should do with Westercom from two years from now, because I think that's a different subject of discussion. Uh, however, what I am gonna do is I'm going to have a other option on the straw poll. So if you don't think that either the scenario one or scenario two that we discussed is the right way to go forward, I'll say option, I'll just say other scenario again, and you can raise your hand, and honestly, then you should, pro and if that has support, you should probably be ready to be recognized to explain what, what, you're, what you're thinking. Uh, so, okay, so if you're broadly in favor of scenario one, which is to retire Westercon, wind it down, please raise your hand. Let's see, three hands. Uh, if you're broadly in favor of scenario two, continue Westercon with some modifications. I see a lot of hands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're in favor of something else, please raise your hand. I don't see anybody. Okay. Kevin Stambling, uh, before I move to a motion that I do have here, I wish to address a couple of technical things along the way. First of all, the requirement for U.S.-based groups whole, whole filing bids for WesterCon is that they be nonprofit organizations, not necessarily that they are 501c3. I do not believe we have the actual coding of 501c3 in the bylaws. There is a difference. If you want to know what the difference is, talk to me or Ben or a couple other people after this meeting. Um, other than other than a nonprofit's a little bit a little bit simpler than a 501c3. Different question. So the other thing is that part of the intention. This is actually a speech in favor of scenario two. I will say this. Um, the intent there is to make it so WesterCon could be combined with another convention, with BayCon, with NorwestCon, with LostCon, with Leprechaun. Leprechaun's still running, I think. Yes, right. <laughs> You know, I mean, they were tired. All of these it could be combined, that Oricon, similarly. Or a group who was interested in holding a, you might call it a more traditional Westercon, a standalone event, could go for a point of time where there isn't actually a Western North American convention conflicting with it. Like, maybe, possibly Memorial Day. Uh, who knows, you know, I mean, it's just, just to draw something dates out of the top, out of my head. Who would have thought, you know? It's a, uh, so there's actually lots of points on it. It could go all of those ways. Uh, I, uh, Honorable Chair, I move that the Committee of the Whole adopt as a recommend, as part of its recommendations and report to the meeting, Scenario 2, the package of constitutional amendments. Second. Motion is, motion is seconded. Uh, I'm going to count that as a speech in favor. Uh, is there a speech against? I'm not seeing any speeches against. A speech in favor? Call, call that question. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody jumping to speak. So uh, the question is on the motion to recommend item scenario two in its entirety without amend in its entirety without further amendment to the as part of the committee's recommendation to the meeting as a whole. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Seeing, I see no hands opposed, so the motion carries a, motion carries a lot to zero. Uh, there is, uh, because somebody asked, you abstain by not raising your hand, it's not happening. Uh, so that's that's our recommendation. That that's the recommendation for for the for kind of the big picture questions. We have not, however, adopted a recommendation as to the next West as to Westercon seventy seven, and that was business referred to us. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, on a point of information, when would Westercon? Uh, Cliff Dunn. Um, I would, and on point of information, I'll just ask uh, what the constraints for Westercon 77 are. Uh, 
The constraints for Westercom 77 are that they be in the Westercom zone in, uh, and we probably should have it in 2025, although I'm not sure that's actually a form of constraint. We'll fix that later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the only uh, the only constraint is that we approve it by a two thirds by a two thirds vote, and it's somewhere in the Western Con region. Honorable Chair, my name is Kevin Stanley. We are now at the point where we have to, as a committee of the whole, decide, do we want to recommend a specific site, or committee, I should say, not a site, a committee, or do we want to rec say, we cannot make a decision, uh, we don't make it, and, and basically not make it, we're probably not making a recommendation of any sort to the main meeting. The meeting could then adopt by a majority vote the, the motion that says, we can't decide the thing that's laying on the table out there in the main meeting. But this does include some things that I'm not sure everyone is aware of. And that is, when we award a Westercon, particularly in this way, but in general, when we award a Westercon to a committee, believe it or not, that committee doesn't have to get anybody's permission to change what they do with it, as long as they stick within the bylaws. I'm not even talking about what happened two years ago, which I will bring up in a moment, but they're the last Denver Westercon was won by a group with the committee and a site, and then that group transferred their entire franchise to a completely different organization, which, as I recall, also held it at a different site in the Denver metropolitan area yeah. Yeah. over the same weekend. They didn't need anybody's permission to do that, okay? We, we give the convention to a committee. The committee is meant to carry this out. There's sort of an assumption that you have to hold it in the year you won your franchise for. I guess we've never made that explicit. As I say, we'll fix that in the future, I suspect. It seems obvious to me that holding it in the following year is weird and should not be allowed, but I digress. So what we have as a, an option in here is what we did two years ago and is what I call the caretaker committee proposal. This meeting two years ago in this building, uh, uh, effectively we, had, we awarded the Westercon to a committee of two people, of which I was one of them, with the recognition that we were going to try and find somebody to hold the convention, and we would transfer the franchise to. So that is one possibility. We did that. It did not go as well as I had hoped. For <laughs> I, I apologize for that, and I'm sure the committee that was going to hold the convention earlier this year has the same apology. So what we have before us is, oh, and I, one other thing I meant to add here is that none of the bids that were given write-in votes, even if, uh, were actually filed bids, even if every single one of those 18 ballots that were actually counted had been 18 votes for Seattle and nothing else, they still would not have won because they did not meet the technical requirement. This has happened before. It has happened yeah. before. It happened last year. Okay. Um, so that's one of the things here. However, it can be indicative. I, I defer to my colleague over here. It could be indicative of what the members might have been interested in doing. So I see before us is what we have is what this committee should be doing here is considering in basically informal proposals from groups, perhaps groups who are prepared to hold the convention right now, if you give it to us, we'll go forth and try and make it happen. Groups that say, we're sort of interested, but we need a little bit of time to think about it, which is effectively saying, I want a caretaker committee to work on it. Or those who are explicitly in favor of a caretaker committee. Or the, and the fourth and final one is, we don't want to make a recommendation, which is basically saying we're going to toss it to, to losses. I don't think I've missed anything in our possibilities here. And to that extent, I want to express that the, pre the, the previous caretaker committee, consisting of Kevin Stanley and Lisa Hayes, is prepared to take on that same role again. All right? And I would yield to Lisa Hayes to discuss, this, to discuss that before we move on to actually anyone else who has a proposal. 
as Kevin stated, we were given the point of a caretaker to find someone. We thought we had found someone. We did that in good faith. Now, I have learned a lot since then, and if you'll still trust me and Kevin, I'll make two points. I guarantee a convention on my own resources, period. On the other hand, in that time period, if I find another group who asks me that they want WesterCon and can prove they have the resources and the initiative, me and Kevin, Kevin and I have talked with this, would be not just honored but ecstatic to turn it over to them. But we're going to be hard-assed this time. I want to see finances, I want to see sites, I want to see committee, I want to see a lot of more down because, well, what I can offer is not very good. It's there. It's hard. I can afford it. I can do it. Now, there's another one of it. Seattle is up there. And I, truthfully, I think I'd like to go to Seattle. I want to tell you, I'd like to go to Seattle because it's a great place to go. I haven't been to the Clam Chowder place in a long time. However, I'm going to still say, I think that me and Kevin would make the best caretaker. We've already been stung once. We know what's what, and I've got to say the point, who knows more about WesterCon than Kevin except maybe Ben? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, honorable Chair, I do also wish to state that um, in the purpose of a caretaker committee, the site, this is a, this is a mechanical issue. We did take in cash, um, $380, some of which was no, 80. There, were, yeah, there was one person who paid for a ballot and didn't cast it. Okay, that, that, that's their choice, you know. Um, including some checks payable to WesterCon. Um, as you're probably aware, I am the chair of the previous WesterCon that actually happened last year in Tonopah. And yes, it did happen, and we don't really fault Baycon for what happened, but it did cost us 50 to 100 members. Ouch. But did I digress? Oh, wait a minute, we had their money, but we would have liked to have their bodies as well, you know? <laughs> uh, the, the treasurer of WesterCon 74, and I might add, WesterCon 74 is just that close to being able to close its books. However, WesterCon 74 is willing to act as the caretaker of that $380 and hold it in San Francisco Science Fiction Convention's bank accounts until such time as a convention is awarded. Just so there's, the money isn't going to go stale. Uh, the checks, I mean, will not go stale. All right. Uh, and thank you, and I yield. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'll have it. Any discussion? Uh, it is possible to discuss. It is possible for somebody to jump up and say that they're planning, that they would like to host the Western Con. It is possible. I'm aware of that. Another another WesterCon. Uh, but it, it is possible to discuss anything relating to what, what, what we do with WesterCon 77. If you want yeah. to talk to Michael. My name is Charles Galway. I'm chair of WesterCon 76. I'm aware of some of the and what well, is involved in doing the WesterCon 76 in Utah next year. Um, I want to just talk about WesterCon. Um, I have a few thoughts. One thought that I noticed in the last 30 years is what I call the sanity test, which is if I want to run a convention, have eight people, sort of this uh, sanity test, of people who are really going to be there and run it with you, and all the conventions we've seen that have failed in Utah didn't pass that same sanity test. It was somebody who wanted to do it, but didn't have eight confident people. And I was right on the border of that eight number. And so I felt like my convention is harder than I had really wanted. We certainly had eight people who wanted to help and were confident. And we're also aging out. And I'm afraid that that's also the case in other parts of the world. The second point is that the Western region is actually small enough that I think somebody with the competency of who are really picked to be the committee can actually look at every convention in the West between Utah and all the other states that I'm aware of 
and kind of look at it and say, hey, any of these, and I think that is where your, what your country going to come from, is from the people you know, not from some void out there that comes in on a spaceship. Um, thank you. Uh, is there further discussion? Hi, my name is Lisa Deutsch Hemmergen. I am the treasurer of SFSFC. Um, I am also was the chairman of WesterCon 40. So I have all sorts of things in this game. Um, I, if if Kevin does indeed get placed as the as the temporary t temporary committee, um, I am willing to do the bookkeeping necessary to to keep the books straight until such time as the Westercon is appointed. Um, and frankly, I would like to see Westercon continue scenario <coughs> two um, because. This this is my this is my home convention. This is the first convention I attended. I met my husband at a WesterCon, um, and we had a relationship for a few years, meeting at WesterCons until such time as he moved up into Northern California, and we became a couple. So um, WesterCon will remain important to me. And it can be smaller. That's not a bad thing. Um, it would, it you know, it's nice to say we had we we Western Concordia was huge, but several of the other ones immediately thereafter were only 80, 800. Um, this was it, it fluctuated all over the place, and it will continue to fluctuate all over the place. The yes, I, I am also the treasurer of uh, consonants which is one of the smaller conventions also mentioned, we have been having a heck of a time getting people to come back. And we're having a heck of a time with facilities as well because a lot of these hotels now are thinking that they are worth billions of bucks, <coughs> um, even for small spaces. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really crazy what the hotels are doing these days. Um, they have, they have these, Apparently, they have decided to go out of the convention business um, because it used to be we could easily just, you know, say, "Oh, we're going to give you uh, 30 or 40 rooms," you know, you know, like what is it? it was about? It was about. Um, I, I believe we were giving them about 200 room nights, um, and we could get a reduction on our fees. Now they're jacking up the fees and no reduction. Yeah, the attrition fees. You know, no, no, no. Actually. Um, it used to be, you know, because we were promising them 200 nights, they'd give us, oh, well, 200 nights, we don't, we'll knock $1,000 off the bill. Um, now they're saying, it's $10,000, we're not knocking anything off the bill, no matter how many room nights you give us. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy what they're doing right now. Yeah, but I know I'm going to borrow the week, but I'm saying it is difficult. Um, so I understand the problems of putting together a Western Con these days. Like I said, the hotels are nuts. Um, but I'm willing to let it try to, to figure out getting past this COVID mess, which is still a mess. I mean, there are still people who are afraid to come to a meeting of more than 10 people because they're afraid they'll catch COVID. So there, there, there is, a, and, and you know, mind you, I caught COVID from my office, so. <laughs> Coming to meetings is not as bad as a lot of people think, but um, there is still that fear. Anyways, I gotta let it go, and hopefully we can come to the conclusion that let Westercon continue. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a suggestion at this point to uh, keep, keep things moving forward. Is this a question of privilege because I have multiple other people that haven't spoken on this evening? In order to question the privileges of the assembly to try and get us to where we can actually make a decision on that. I will recognize. I would like to speak about yeah. what the Seattle people 
I would recognize you briefly for a question of, oh, but only for a question of. Well, I'll put it in the form of a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Honorable Chair. Would it be in order at this time for the chair to call upon any groups who have an interest in possibly bidding, not necessarily expecting to be awarded the convention at this time? Yes, it would. And that's what I'm thinking might be a good idea at this point. Okay. Uh, does, uh, 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 sorry, Mr. Ron, I did see you first. What purpose? I wanted to make a motion to end the debate and call for a vote, but. The, the chair would advise that the previous question is not in order in the Committee of the Whole. <laughs> chair recognizes Ms. So, Deneroff. My name is Linda Deneroff. Um, I said I would look into putting together a convention in Seattle. My thinking was it would be a small relaxicon because it's the same year as the Worldcon in Seattle. I was thinking of doing it on Memorial Day weekend because that would put it further away from the World Con and put it a little bit further away from the West Con. I was also thinking of Memorial Day weekend because the cruise season will not have started and the room rates will be a lot cheaper. I don't know if you've heard what the room rates are for the World Con, but take a deep breath when you look at them. Um, it's not pretty and, and that's unfortunate. Um, it would be a relaxicon. I live near the, well, it won't be the end at the time, but I live in Northgate. And there are three hotels in the Northgate area, only one of which I would actually even think about going with. And I know they have three function rooms and they have space. However, I have not spoken to them and I don't know what they would charge us. I have connections to what was originally the Seattle Westercon Organizing Committee and is now SWAP and I would ask them for a grant because I cannot do this on my own financial accord. And hopefully SWAP will agree and if all the, all the chips fall into place, we can hold a Westercon in Seattle in May of 2025. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hayes. Um. I want to restate, I want to go to see Linda's convention, but I'm going to restate again that I think a committee of me and Kevin are the best choice we have at the moment, and we could then award it that direction if it looks good, and if not, we have fallbacks. I call now for a vote between Linda Denneroff and Lisa and Kevin to pick one. This is a vote from the committee of the whole. This is not binding, but it's a recommendation we can pass on to the meeting. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think that's quite a well-formed rationale for purpose. Um, we'll let somebody else do it. And why is it retired? That's just kind of one of those options. We killed that already a year. There, there, there was already a, there was already a straw poll between scenario one, scenario two, and the, the opinion was overwhelmingly for scenario two. We subsequently adopted a motion to recommend scenario two. And knowing is half the battle. She uh, is um, Cliff Dunn. I wanted to ask if uh, Lisa, Kevin, and Linda would be up for working together on this. Because it seems rather than picking between the two of them, if Linda has the uh, most likely proposal, we could just lump the three of you all together and have you all work together. But I think you all have worked together once or twice. If, if the member would yield, we can I'll answer it. <laughs> Cliff, you have to keep standing up here while you, because you still technically have the floor. Are you going to yield to me with this answer? Yes, I will yield to Mr. Stanley. Yes, uh, Kevin Stanley. The, uh, of, of course we would, but I think it perhaps I would suggest it would be better if we heard, I know, I know for a fact there's at least one and possibly two or three other groups in this room who want to put down the same sort of markers, and I'd like to hear a short statement from each of them, because I don't think we're going to be in a position to award a Western Con to any of those groups. So look, could we just hear just a little bit from each before we consider the question of, say, a caretaker committee? I return my time, yield back. Sure, why not? I yield. The chair would once again advise people standing in the rear of the room that the chair cannot tell if they're seeking recognition or not. I'm sorry. 
Mr. Beckstead. Hi there, Scott Beckstead. Um, I had considered putting it together a Las Vegas bid for Westercon 77. Um, I'm not absolutely certain that I can do that, but I would like to give it a shot. Um, for that purpose, I recommend giving the committee to the caretaker. caretaker committee to Mr. Stanley and Lisa. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. Doral Karolinski, um, we have spoken and Baycom is interested. We are unable to commit. We are unable to say yes, but we are interested in discussions and would really like it if Mr. Stanley and Ms. Hayes would be our caretakers that we can have further conversations about future possibilities. Does any other member seek recognition? Let me actually make the motion. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Honorable Chair, I move that the Committee of the Whole recommend the main meeting that a caretaker committee, that, that Westercon 77 be awarded to a caretaker committee consisting of Kevin Stanley and Lisa Hayes, and that they be instructed primarily to consider other groups with the possibility of transferring the franchise to them at a, a, a convenient date under the correct circumstances. Uh, Mr. To speak against that motion. This is Michael Mormon. Uh, I recommend that the committee as a whole recommend that the committee that the bid be awarded to the eight votes for Seattle. Thank you. Uh, yes, the chair. The chair. One option too. The, the, Yes, that, that, that is debate. That is that is debate against. That is debate against. Uh, the chair would advise that if you want that that to effectuate that outcome, the appropriate thing to do would be to reject the mo the motion that is currently before us, and then it would be in order to propose an alternative motion to award Westercom seventy to recommend that we award that we award Westercom seventy seven to a different group, such as the one suggested. Is there a the, the previous question is not in order in committee of the whole. Is there, an, is there a speech in favor? The, most, the motion before us is to award it to, is to award Westercon 77 to, to the, the caretaker committee of Mr. Stanley and his Hayes. Um, Kathy Johnson, I'd like to speak in favor of the caretaker motion. Um, while uh, Seattle uh, seems willing to hold the convention, we are not yet sure if they are prepared. So by awarding it to the committee, uh, the caretaker committee first, this allows uh, Linda to complete her work, um, finding a venue and making sure everything can work, finding, uh, as you said, a possible grant and things like that. So Seattle may be where it happens, um, but since we can't award it to Seattle because Seattle doesn't know they have a venue yet. That Seattle doesn't know they have anything yet. Um, and that gives it time to happen. If it falls through, that can allow it to fall back to the caretaker committee to maybe report it to Baycon or some of the other choices or, or whatever happens. Um, once we go to the caretaker committee, um, can the, the, out of the committee of the whole, a recommendation back to that to recommend to the caretaker committee to take Seattle's bid first, if, or if it falls through, then move to some of the other options because we need to have some votes for Seattle, and I think that would answer your concern. The committee, okay, both the, okay, the business meeting and likewise the committee could recommend to the business meeting as a whole that the committee 
that the that the caretaker sure, committee to take it into account, but the caretaker committee doesn't actually have to do that because the, they can have their choices. But we can recommend. That, that's why I said not a requirement, but a recommendation that the sense of the room is this is what we want. Yeah. Would, would the member yield for a question? I would. Yes. Yeah. Straight me out. <laughs> Kevin Stanley, I believe it is pretty obvious that the caretaker committee would take under advisement any of the groups who have stood up here and said we're interested. Absolutely. Seattle, like, Las Vegas, Bacon, and indeed, it's not impossible that the caretaker committee might contact some of the other people who may not have been paying attention for the last couple of years and say, you have this opportunity, would you be interested? I don't know, you know, but I, I, I yield back. Yes. Thank you, so I think we can be Speaking again to the motion that we can be certain that the caretaker committee will in fact take care of That is a brilliant way to put that. Okay, can we, uh, so first of all, can we please have order? Second, is there a speech against the motion to award West Palm 77 to the caretaker committee? Recommendation. The rec it's a recommendation. The motion to recommend Etc. Uh, I don't see any members seeking recognition. Are there any other speeches in favor? Mr. Mr. Chair? Mr. Dunn? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, really sorry about that. Uh, Cliff Dunn still. Um, I would like to propose that we add this recommendation and that the Committee of the Whole then rise and report to the main meeting. Uh, the mo it would be in order to propose the motion, it would be best to do the motion to rise after we vote on the recommendation. Okay. I, there are more complicated, we could, that, that's the least complicated way of doing it. Uh, are there further, any further speeches on either side? Seeing and hearing none, uh, I will put the question the mo on the motion to recommend to the business meeting uh, that we, that Westercom 77 be awarded to a caretaker committee consisting of Mr. Stanley and Ms. Hayes with the route with the, uh, with the implication that they sub look at, that they look at bid at prospective hosts of the Westercom and, uh, and award it to one of them or if necessary, Ms. Hayes just hosts it herself. Um, <laughs> Uh, all those in this requires a simple majority as a recommendation of the committee of the whole. When we actually do this, when we when the business meeting as a whole votes on it, it will be on making it actually happen. It will be a two thirds vote, but for the committee of the whole, the recommendation only requires a simple majority. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. What? Uh, all all those opposed to the motion, please raise your hand. Uh, the motion is adopted. Mr. Dunn. Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe that we are ready to rise and report to the main meeting, and therefore I move that we do so. Second. Motion, it, motion to rise has been made and is not debatable. Those in favor of the motion to rise and report, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed, please raise your hand. One, uh, the motion is the motion carries many to one. Uh, the committee rises.